let's go. Welcome once again. So good to see so many of you here. I'm in Germany, in Dortmund, and today we're going to talk about one of the obviously hottest uh, topics on Toastmasters, and it's mentoring. I hope you can see my screen. Yes, perfect. <laughs> so masterclass of mentoring. Let's recap very, very short what we um, had on masterclass number one. Uh, we had wonderful participants and we had three exercises. The first exercise was um, ask yourself, who is your favorite trainer? And then we connected this to the future saying, what you see in your favorite trainer or speaker, it's already inside you and you can develop on, or even become better. Then uh, we had the exercise, what do you really love or enjoy on Toastmasters? And this is what we have now. And I promise you, we heard uh, wonderful comments. So feel free to take a look at the recording. And then um, the next question was, what can you teach a very young Toastmaster? And this is you in the past. And as you see, everything is connected to everything and everything is about mentoring. And the yellow point is actually coaching. Later today, I'll ask you, fellow Toastmasters, what do you believe is the difference between mentoring and coaching? But let's do that later. Today, we have five speakers. In a minute, uh, Gudrun will start session regarding onboarding mentoring for very, very young members. I will show you some thoughts about the pathways mentoring. Then we'll hear about the wonderful international project Odyssey mentoring from Adriana. Then about leadership mentoring from our um, immediate past district director 95, Elizabeth Smith. Uh, last but not least, uh, Markus Bonsippen will tell you something about the vice president mentoring, a very interesting and promising role. And after that, we have open end discussion where you can ask questions or comment and so on and exchange. And now, ladies and gentlemen, let's go for the first part where Gudrun will present on onboarding mentoring. Gudrun is a very high motivated Toastmaster, co-founder of Ingo Speakers Toastmasters, very passionate about uh, leadership, a big fan of Tony Robbins, just like me. So a presentation <laughs> of Gudrun is a guarantee for a good time. Enjoy, uh, dear Gudrun, the stage is yours. Thank you very much. There was a pupil and he asked his master, Master, please, can you tell me the difference in between hell and heaven? And the master said, well, if you will accompany me, I will show you. And they went away and they came on a place. There was a big round table and in the middle of the table, there was a big pen with the best food you can imagine and the souls are sitting around the table on a bench and every soul has a big and very long spoon so that the soul can reach the wonderful food but they are crying and it was so unlucky because they cannot feed themselves and they suffered very much and so the master said that is the hell and they went further on and they came on another room and there was also a big huge round table and in the middle a, a pan and in this pan there is the wonderful best food you can imagine around there are sitting the souls and every soul has a long spoon to reach the wonderful food and they are laughing and they are so happy and so lucky because they feed one soul feeds the other and the master said, this is Toastmasters. Oh, this is the heaven. <laughs> Dear directors, officers, presidents, Toastmasters, 
Thank you very much for the opportunity, opportunity to tell about mentoring. My club is Ingle Speakers, and we founded it. We, uh, we chartered in 2019 September, and last year we were very we were very successful. We found 11 new members at Corona time. And we are now 31. And so it's good to find new members, but it's not so good to lose them very quick. You know, there are sometimes they start and they're full enthusiastic and excited. They make one or two speeches or maybe three, and then you don't hear anything about them. And after half a year or a year, uh, one year, they are gone. They have gone. And this is not in our club. We have a very good spirit. And I think the most important on that is the onboarding mentoring skill. And so I will tell you about mentoring today. When there is a new member, usually they have a lot of questions because Toastmaster is something sometimes a little bit complicated. And as a, um, as a mentor, you start, you get connection with the new member and you start and you answer the questions of the new member. And you help him and give, give him guidance through these com complex things of Toastmasters. That is a big help for new members. Most important is that you know what are the goals of this new uh, member. You do a goal setting. Is, uh, is this, what are the needs of this new member? Uh, does it uh, want to improve the communication or are the leadership skills interesting? Or maybe both. What are the expectations? of this uh, new member and then you if you know this you can help this and uh, this new member and support it by the first steps to success if you know all the goals and it's very important that you activize this new member so it may be with this icebreaker or the table topics or to take over a role during uh, the evening or maybe uh, later on uh, maybe they are interested to take over a role in the um, uh, as an officer and uh, you uh, you work on that that he can achieve the first success and then sometimes uh, they they think they have a problem with their comfort zone and then you help them to think you can do it. You you help them with their encouragement. Give them the feeling to overcome his problems. It's very important. And then you boost the potential. Make him feel this, uh, that his pot potential by doing first steps and praise, praise every little success in a positive way and give him a bigger challenge so that he can grow. And what is most important is all these steps will enhance the trust in you as a mentor. To work with a mentee supports the confidence. And you know Toastmasters are never alone. If the new member has the, the feeling that you will help to succeed, then they trust in you. That is very, very, very important. And now, what? How do you do that to be a, mem uh, a mentor? And so you know, Toastmaster has for everything tools. Sometimes you need a hammer for some things. Sometimes you need a driller or a screwdriver. And so Toastmaster has all these resources for to be a good mentor and 
the first thing is to give a new member orientation. Uh, one moment, I will show you. That is a sheet. I have to open up. Uh, one moment. Ah, one moment, I have to stop. And then I have to... Ah, there it is. I'm sorry. So... One moment. I want to. Yet so. This it is. So, you will find this. I uh, give you in the chat later on at the link to this sheet. And as you can see, there is welcome to our Toastmasters Club and this is like a huge checklist. You can go through with your new member. And there are tips of what to do first and second and so on. You see the club meeting roles that the new member can fill out roles. Maybe he will take the R counter or the timer in the beginning. What to do. And then about Toastmasters Club officers' responsibilities, that the member knows how a club is organized. Then about pathways, an overview about all these passes. Go further on. So. To select the pass. And, you know, especially for German-speaking clubs, it's not so easy to get into the pathways uh, uh, to the base camp because not all pages are translated. And so please help them and uh, to get into pathways, to open it up to and to, to choose the pass. There are also the simple pathways instructions. And I know I tried it first myself and it helps when there is somebody who has done it already. So please help your mentee to get into it. And online you can do things together. Then recording meeting roles, uploading evaluations, how to make all these things. I think, uh, uh, Stefan, I think I you will tell about uh, pathways to use it later. And then this is important. Here you see the mentor assignment notice. If you take over a role as a mentor for a mentee, please write it in and send it to Toastmasters because there you will get um, points for your, if you want to make the distinguished Toastmasters. That is really important. And here, and there are the tips and how to make it compatible to be a good uh, mentor. Responsibilities when want mentoring a new member. Here you see, at the first club meeting, sit with the new member. Orient the new member to club, uh, to club customs and procedures. Explain how to sign up and help with the icebreaker. Very important. At the second meeting, you see that you have here a list what to do. So if you work like on, like on this sheet, everybody can be a good mentor. And if you have, if you don't know uh, something, then you can ask another. Um, you know, at Toastmasters, you are never alone. 
and at the second meeting within the next month. What can you do? Make the mentee aware of resources, provide positive feedback, explain the responsibilities, help with speeches and other assignments, and then eventually here you have some points you can choose tell how you're benefited. Tell about yourself because to motivate uh, your mentee. Invite the mentee to other events like for example like this workshop or uh, there are speech contests or something or explain officer's duties and then uh, uh, describe the Toastmaster organization. That's interesting. They are now a part of this and one, one moment, here I am. And here are more mentoring tips. So you, this list gives you a lot of ideas what you can do with your mentee. And I'm sure it's like a checklist. Work that through. So and you see, sometimes uh, this point is very important for your mentee, and sometimes it's not so important. Then make the, all these things that are interesting uh, because they fit to the goals of your mentee. So, and here have a new new member profile, the data, the communication and leadership goals, and uh, communication and leadership skills you can ask for, and so you have then a working sheet you can do for every mentee you have. I have in the moment, I have three mentees. And so that helps that if something is similar that you uh, um, that not uh, take the goals of the one uh, that you can have a look on it. So this is this sheet. And then we have a moment. Stop then. I will show you the next. The next is member interests away. One moment, I'm searching for it. I show it to you. No, don't. Here, Toastmaster has for everything uh, uh, something. Member is uh, member interests away. Here is the goals list. Two goals you wish to accomplish this year as a Toastmaster, and list two objectives you want to accomplish in the next few months in support of those goals. You work through with your new member with your mentee and then here are the interests, personal and vocational interests. Club involvement was is interesting on the club. Uh, serve as a club officer. If so, which role? Help the club with public relations. Uh, so if you go through this list, you can tell your uh, your new member a lot about Toastmaster. Outside the club. Lead or help with speech craft, leadership programs, Yao's communication models. Good Visit. Time. Sorry for yeah. interrupting you. We see your browser uh, and not uh, the file that you sh uh, want to show. Okay. Oh, I'm very sorry about that. No problem. Uh, moment. I have it on my screen. Here. Oh, yeah. I forgot the next. Mm -hmm. Okay. You see it now? Yes. I'm sorry. So here are all these questions and I'm sure if you are working through this with that mentee that helps a lot and give him an under, uh, overview what is all possible here at Toastmasters. At club quality overall experiences. So and then you have a list to work what is most, you start with that what's most interesting. And that makes it simple to be a good mentor. So, so, 
So this was, remember, interests away. And then please help help your mentee with the icebreaker. That, and uh, practice, give feedback, make it better that, uh, that he succeeds. And um, he will be uh, motivated and very happy to be at Toastmasters. And then also, maybe you will show how feedback he feedback is working. To do uh, maybe a next uh, meeting, he will do an evaluation that will help. And when you do all these things, and you see you have a wonderful list how to do it, then I'm sure that this new Toastmaster is in Toastmaster's heaven. And he, he will feel like it. This is our charter party of Inquil speakers. Stefan, you see you are in the middle there. As usual, <laughs> as usual. Yeah, that was so <laughs> nice. And we are just right now uh, starting a new club, but in English speaking, in Ingolstadt uh, named called Talking. The heaven gets better and better in Ingolstadt. And I hope if there starts a new member and you make it in this way, I'm sure they will be there for year, uh, years and years and years. Maybe they do the distinguished Toastmasters, they get an area director, um, district director, and maybe uh, we don't know. There are a lot of possibilities at Toastmasters. And um, that will help a lot. Thank you very much for this. Uh, opportunity to tell you about what I think what makes our club so uh, so good and so uh, successful. This is very important uh, tool. Thanks a lot. Mm, yummy, that was tasty. Thank you very much, good room. Let's continue with the next topic, and it's pathways mentoring. Thank you so much, dear Gudrun, for mentioning the icebreaker, because we all know what the icebreaker is. And actually, this is where a Toastmaster career starts. But I have something for you that shows a career of a Toastmaster starts actually much earlier. The first thing that happened is that someone hears or reads about Toastmasters. I ask all guests of my clubs and also Toastmaster friends, how did you join our organization? And they answer two things. They heard about Toastmasters from friends or they read about it somewhere in a book, newspaper or similar. That means actually mentorship begins very, very early when you tell someone about Toastmasters. And uh, depending on how you talk about Toastmasters, it could be a very successful relationship. Then the person joins a Toastmaster club and has the onboarding mentoring. I have a few questions for you. Let's have a little bit more interaction. Who of you knows the legacy uh, education system? Give me a sign, raise your hand. I see maybe 50%, okay. And who is missing the legacy system? Please be honest. Uh, this is only, uh, okay, three, four, five. A lot, oh, 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 I see new camera starting a lot. Yes, now, now it's interesting, perfect. Who would like to unmute just for a minute and tell us why do you miss the legacy system? Be honest, I want to hear it. Uh, this is the first time I've heard about the legacy. Uh, okay. Halfway, whatever. I mean the uh, competent communicator. Ah, uh, right. The old-fashioned book <laughs> before Pathways. Uh, mm, my favorite. <laughs> okay. I Is someone... Yes, uh, Dermot? Uh, yeah. I think that something I've heard and I think I agree with is that the old system had that leadership track and the communication track. And I think it was a bit more legible than Pathways is, at least for someone who came out of it, perhaps for a newer member who's, okay. only, who's only done Pathways. It's, it's, it's more, um, more clear. 
Perfect. Today I will show, thank you very much, wonderful answer. Today I will show you the hidden leadership track on pathways. And the track begins when you explain a friend or family member what Toastmasters is. Then I have a next question for you. Who completed already level two? Give me a sign, level two completed. At least mm. once, I see a lot of hands. Okay, perfect. On it at the moment. Perfect. Well, now another question. Who completed the uh, mentorship part of Pathways? It's a little bit longer. Marcos, uh, Prescient. Okay, wonderful. Few of you, Gudrun, <clears throat> Milena. Okay, few of you. Now I have special question for you, uh, Toastmasters who completed Toastmasters mentoring. Where does it start? Where is the With point? the first mentee, wherever you join. Okay, that's a good thing. Level two. Okay, good one. Would you like to explain? Would you like to explain? Yeah, every part, it's, uh, level two is about mentoring, mentorship. Okay. Uh, because yes. that is so important. Absolutely correct. Um, In I already our club. Mm -hmm. We start the club uh, on the old system uh -huh. and we assign mentors to the uh, more experienced Toastmaster mm -hmm. before Pathways. So Wonderful. for us, mentoring starts a little bit early than level two. Very good. That's <laughs> leadership by example and that's the perfect onboarding. I already copied the link uh, of this drive in the chat where we have some interesting stuff around mentoring. For example, the recording of our first session, but also the introduction to Toastmaster. This is the latest point where every Toastmaster should know and understand we have mentoring. And this is in the same time, part one of the bigger mentoring project. And now I have a very short video for you because I believe uh, uh, it's very important to see things, to be able to remember that. I will show you two minutes video from World Headquarters that shows you how to find the longer mentorship track. Uh, I also need to um, share my audio so you can hear it. And here we go. Hi, I'm Melissa. And today I want to show you how you can access the Pathways Mentor Program. Within 24 hours of your Basecamp manager approving your level two completion for any path, you'll find the Pathways Mentor program here in the suggested learning box on the Basecamp homepage. When you click on the title, you'll be taken to a page where you can get an overview of what's included in the Pathways Mentor program. To add this to your Paths and Learning page, click Open Curriculum. Now you're inside the Pathways Mentor program, where you can activate and launch the first item and get started learning. Next time you visit your Paths and Learning page, you'll see that the program has been added here so you can quickly access and start working in these projects. Once you've completed all the Pathways Mentor program projects and the additional requirements, the Pathways Mentor field in your Basecamp profile will change from No to Yes. This field is visible to other members of your home club, so they'll know that you've completed all requirements toward the Pathways Mentor program. So every Toastmaster with um, completed level two is also ready to go the mentorship path. It's a, like a mini path. I'm sure you remember the high performance leadership or you know the high performance leadership. It's similar like this, like this but with a few projects. And um, let's go back to the drive where I have overview for you that explains the parts of the mentoring. We have the self uh, first, this project that every Toastmaster does in level two, introduction to mentoring. 
Then we have prepare to mentor. It's some kind of self-assessment where uh, you can um, make some, answer some questions and then learn more about you as a mentor. After that, you can mentor a Toastmaster for one specific project. And my favorite part is the advanced mentoring, where you can mentor a Toastmaster for six months. And this is the huge hidden leadership in Pathways, because it's um, very similar to the topic uh, you will hear from Elizabeth. For example, when you're a president, the perfect mentor for you is the immediate past president or another past president. And of course, when you are president, you are maybe the vice president of education from last year, and you can mentor the vice president, the current vice president of education. Actually, there are endless possibilities what you can do here. And for every of these levels, you uh, need to have a short speech and to present. Now let's continue the Toastmaster journey after Pathways Mentoring 2 and after the huge pathways mentoring more than half year you are leadership mentor you are leader but also a person that leads others and you are also ready to try the club mentoring that means you can mentor a freshly chartered club for example gudrun's club is chartered one year ago around actually more but let's say one year and the first six months you can mentor a club and then we have a lot of hidden mentors. You all know the abbreviation DTM. It's not only distinguished Toastmaster, but it's also distinguished mentor. When you see someone with this title, this is the perfect person to mentor you, to mentor your club and to support you. So don't hesitate to challenge our distinguished Toastmasters. <laughs> Actually, I'm distinguished Toastmaster as well. So feel free to ask uh, if you have any wishes or if I can do anything for you. So this is the short introduction of the mentoring on pathways. As you see, today's event is some kind of appetizer. We are not able to cover everything in one hour, but we are able to present you wonderful things and to make you cur curious to learn more. This is one of the reasons why I'm extremely happy to have Adriana here today, as promised, We'll hear now a um, few minutes about the Odyssey project. I'm a global thinking person. And as I heard about this project, I thought, wonderful. This is exactly what we need because we can connect Toastmasters across areas, across divisions, across districts, across continents. And I'm very happy to have you here, Adriana. The stage is yours. Thank you, Stefan, and uh, good evening to everybody. There are some people that I already know, familiar faces from Odyssey, also from elsewhere, and also some names that uh, I recognize from the project. So it's my pleasure to be here this evening. And uh, I've already heard at the beginning of the session that uh, maybe some of your clubs have the problems of having too many new members who need mentoring. Maybe you also have, um, are facing the problem of uh, having experienced members who need a challenge. What other challenge can be than to mentor people who are in another club, in another district, in another country, at the other side of the world? This is what the Odyssey project does. And to really understand uh, who do we have here, I would ask you who is already familiar with how the Odyssey project works and what it is by a show of hands, please. Okay, a couple of people. Yes, maybe almost, well, a bit less than half, I would say, maybe, yeah. But um, this is good. So let me then share my screen because I have a couple of slides. And I am gradually getting to the sharing. And 
Yes. Here I am. You should be able to see the screen. Do you see it? Okay, very good. Thank you. So uh, what is the Odyssey project? Uh, it's a platform that uh, enables finding a mentor or a mentee in the, your club, in the next club, in the club, in another country, another district, and so on. And uh, this initiative uh, has been, uh, well, it's currently run by uh, six people. We are six people in the team. And uh, all this started in September 2019 when I was um, the club growth director of District 108. So I started as a coordinator of this project and I was initially thinking of having a mentor pool. The initial mentor pool evolved in being more than a mentor pool, evolved in being more than only for District 108. So let's see what it is. It's about a journey. Yes, we are all in a journey through life, through Toastmasters, through mentoring. And let's see how the Odyssey project is doing to help you do better in the mentoring. You already learned what uh, you can do. Stefan already showed and Gudrun so what you should do when you are a mentor. But um, this is to show you how you can find a mentee or how you can challenge yourself as a mentor. And what, there, what is there in the, the project or in the platform? You have the possibility to select which skills you are able to mentor on, or as a mentee, which skills you want to learn. And there's possibility of selecting of more than 30 skills. Nowadays, even um, a bit over 35 skills, I, was, I would say, because we also added the district officer roles as skills that can be mentored. And um, you register, you select the skills, you select the language that you want to use for mentoring. You select also your level. We have a seven scale mentoring um, like levels, but they are defined based on the actual Toastmasters educational awards that you have. In the project, in addition to mentoring, there's also networking, but I will go in fast forward over this and I will show you what's a process in the Odyssey project. You want to be a mentor or you want to be a mentee, you need to register. You input the skills that are of interest for you you input the language, you input your time availability, you input your level, and then you press done and you are registered. After being registered, in at most four weeks, you will receive an email telling you who is your mentor or mentee, depending on who you are, what you are looking for. Why four weeks? Because the Odyssey project has a periodic process, meaning that you can continuously register. And at the next start of the round, we call it that it goes in rounds, a four week round. So it's round after round after round. So you register and when the new round starts, you receive this email. Then you have three weeks to meet your pairs, after which you'll be sharing feedback. Feedback to the system and feedback to your pairs. After which you repeat. Now you might wonder, okay, what happened? So I'm meeting somebody from the other side of the world and you know, the mentoring doesn't go as I hoped for. Maybe, 
maybe. Well, maybe you want somebody else. When you fill in the feedback, you have to check in if you want to continue with the same person or not. If you do not want to continue with the same person, at the next round, you will be assigned a new mentor or a new mentee. So this is very simple process. This is how it go, goes. And when you can start, let me take you out of the, take myself out of the uh, information. And the next round will start on September 27th because uh, just two days ago, the current route started. So it's fresh, freshly started. But as you can see at a four week interval, there is a new round starting. And then there are these three weeks for meeting and then sharing feedback. Uh -huh. Okay, let me put me at my place. And that's it. So you can find, of course, I'm sure you're looking for more information about the project. You can find more information at the project website, which I will also drop in the chat. And you can join the Facebook group. You can also look for the LinkedIn page and Facebook page that we have. And uh, at this moment, I think it's a good moment maybe to stop talking and listen for one or two questions from your side if you have. Yes, I see Michael. Yeah, I have a question. Is it is it is the Odyssey project used as such that people are able to complete their uh, pathways mentoring program in this way? Yes. So the Odyssey project is a very good opportunity to find your mentee. So if you want to do the project and there are no available mentees uh, at your club, then you can register and you're getting a mentee. And then you have the follow up of the um, mentoring through the actually you have the pathways mentoring um, documents already in the email that you are receiving when you are matched with a mentor or mentee. Yeah, the only prerequisite is that you have to at least complete level two in pathways exactly. before participating. Yes. So basically only people who have at least level two in pathways can be mentors. Yes. And thank you for your question. And I see Florian. Yes, uh, thank you, Ariana, for launching this great project. My question is, once you're registered, can you hop on, hop off in the rounds that you decide, okay, I want to be in one month, four weeks, and the next one month, I want to pause and then rejoin? Is this possible to decide month by month? Short answer, yes. So, uh, yes, you are registering and then maybe there's holiday, so you cannot be active in the next round. You inactivate your registration, but uh, and later on you can reactivate it. But not only this, but you can also update your skills. You can update your time availability. So all the settings that you input in the beginning can be updated at a later time. Okay, that answers my my question. Thank you. Thank you. I think I have used already my time, but I see class. Yes, what is, thank you. Uh, this sounds uh, very tempting. What I want to find a mentor for me uh, who is a new president. But another question, what is the most typical skill that they want to practice uh, or be mentored about? I wouldn't, uh, it's, it's hard to, to pick. Uh, I would say we have them in four categories. There are communication and leadership skills. So this, well, communication, leadership, uh, TM officers, and then the software. I would say that the communication and the leadership are the most popular. And uh, in the communication, if you look on the website, of the uh, project at the frequently asked questions, you can see the complete list of skills. 
Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, okay. And I can imagine it's a very long list. <laughs> <laughs> well, it can it can be continuously updated. Uh, we are continuously taking feedback from the participants and uh, make uh, updates to do the process, to the content, and um, yeah, whatever it is needed. And we are also looking, uh, I mean, we are interested to have contributors to the project, people with technical skills or who are interested in uh, promoting, writing articles are very welcome to contribute to the team as well. Okay, so I think my time is over and I uh, do thank you all for uh, listening and thank you once more, Stefan, for inviting me. And if you have more questions, please feel free to contact me. I will also drop my email in the chat. Amazing. Thank you very much, Adriana. Thank you for showing what's possible. And thank you for making so much possible. It was also a very nice feeling to see uh, the questions that shows us we are talking about the right topics and it's the right offer that we make here. And it was also a great feeling to hear you talking about your time as a TRIO member. I'm TRIO member for the second year and I will never forget the first year. It was such a wonderful experience to learn how it is to be part of the TRIO, to contribute, to celebrate together. And there was one person that uh, helped me to be very successful and to have a very good time. It's our fellow Elizabeth. So let's show the slide for a second. The next topic is leadership mentoring. And I'm so happy to have our immediate past district director, Elizabeth Smith here. Enjoy Elizabeth, the digital stage is yours. Great, thanks a lot, Stefan. Thank you and good evening, everyone. Who, who knows that Pavarotti, who was one of the most famous singers of the world, had a singer, trainer and mentor until two weeks before he died. This man has the most brilliant voice. You would think he was a capacity and he had long stopped having a mentor, but he had a song trainer, a voice trainer. He had trainers until two weeks before he died. I always think that that's pretty amazing. And having self had started as um, coming into mentorship as a division director, I chose to have a mentor because I'd never done this before. And that's what mentors are for. We, we choose a mentor who has more experience is ahead of us and could help show us the way. So I've made some slides on this. I also had a mentor as a PQD. And even as a district director, I had a mentor. And as a district director, I also had two mentees. I had a division director and an area director. So I must say that all this mentorship is so important. And I would like to share with you how I have benefited in my leadership skills, having had a mentor, because I think that's important that we reflect on what do we get out from having a mentor. Now, let me just move on to the next. Would you all agree that if you have no one to encourage you, to urge you on, to support you, to listen to you, to show you the way, to mirror back to you, to give you feedback, to challenge you, to check in with you, and even to give you a kick in the butt sometimes. Isn't it that otherwise, if we didn't have that, might not, and we cannot integrate that ourselves and have that self-awareness, then leadership path can be pretty lonely. So as a leader, we are all around looking for answers, people are looking up to you. And this world needs dedicated, committed leaders right now. So people are looking to you for answers for their issues, for their problems, for their questions, for all their stuff. And this can be in a Toastmaster level, but it can be privately and it can be at your work situation if you are a leader. But the challenge is, how do you avoid not becoming a manager? Because a manager is not a leader. 
A leader is someone who dares go out of the way to try something different, who does something new and is not just managing something, but is actually leading a team and leading the way. Developing your leadership skills isn't always as easy as you sometimes think especially if they are lying in you as a potential and you haven't accessed them yet and you might not even be aware that you have them. So a mentor who is ahead of you can be of tremendous help to support you in wakening those leadership skills up in you and making you more aware of your potential by giving you proper feedback. Here is a way a mentor can guide you if you are up in the mentoring levels of leadership. And I would say that the five ways mentoring can help you develop your leadership skills are in these topics. They can help you improve your listening skills, develop your leadership intuition, which I think is vital, use language, how to inspire and unite your team, which is also so imperative, can give you advice and guidance from a person you can trust and support you how to grow into the person your leadership position needs. So helping to improve your listening skills, why would I need a mentor for that? Because leading is listening and deep listening is so important as a leader to know what's going on with your team, with your division directors, with your area directors, sometimes even with your members when they write to me as a district director. And having Florian Bay as my district director leader mentor was a district director. He had already done it. He was a year ahead of me. He was now an IPDD. He was district director in a different district, which was very funny actually because he had a lot of different attitudes to what I had or what he has different habits in district 91 to what we had in district 95. So we had some wonderful discussions and talks where we both got to listen and to be able to understand one another deeper because part of being a mentor is, being lis is listening to what is not being said by your mentee and this is also so important as a mentor when you are mentoring someone is to what are they not saying? Because often that is what is hidden or what is not wanting to come forward or is connected with shame or with something, heavens, what it can be. But why are they not mentioning something regarding conflicts, which might be challenging? But that's why you've got a mentor so that you can talk about and listen about, th about these things. You need to develop your leadership intuition because as a leader, you often have to make decisions and they're not always popular decisions and they're not always easy decisions. This can be even on a club level, area level, whatever level you want to, you're never going to get everyone to love you and you're never going to get everyone to agree with you. So you have to make your own decisions in your own rights together with your team and follow perhaps sometimes more your heart and then back it up logically afterwards. Because I think having an intuitive way of what's the way path forward is essential in leadership. And I think that's why we have a mentor who can tickle that intuitiveness from us and ask lots of questions how do you feel about it? Emotional questions. What is your, what is your gut feeling about it? What, do you, what is your fears connected with this? These are things that can evoke your deep intuition when you are leading. Another thing which most Toastmasters of course know is using language to inspire and unite your team because if you can't motivate your team and speak to them in a way which inspires them, which drives them forward and which gives them really uh, the, the, um, the lust, that's German, of course, um, the desire to be part of this team and, and pull on the same strings as you are, you have to be able to use a language that reaches them so that they know what your path is. So having a mentor who can feed back to you did you really miss that point? 
did you perhaps talk to him on a kinesthetic level or an emotional level, but you've got someone who's highly mental, they might not grasp that. So we have to learn to decide who are we talking to, who is our audience, who is our team, and how do we address them? And how do we learn? Like Stefan Zett, who was my club growth director and myself, we had to learn to, to really respect one another and to talk one another so that I knew, oh, some things I know about Stefan, which I most probably wouldn't address because he doesn't like it. I know he just doesn't like it. So I have to address it in a more subtle way. I have to talk to him on a one-to-one -one level and not in front of others. There's so many different things that we can learn about one another when we have a team and your mentor can support you in showing you, ah, perhaps that is one of your issues where you can address people in a different way. The next one is, which I really, really used a lot with Florian, get advice and guidance you can trust. Florian and myself, I chose him and he said yes to me in Paris where we had just been at the training, at the mid-year training, I think it was. Oh, I can't even remember where it was. Yeah. And we had um, had a lots of fun and lots of discussions. And I had asked him then already half a year in advance if he would like to be my mentor when I was district director. And you need a place where you can come and just be vulnerable and share your fears and share your frustrations. And Florian would always say to me, ah, ah, Elizabeth, you're complaining again. And I said, it's not complaining. I just need to get rid of this. And once I've said it loud, then it's off my shoulders and I can just leave it behind me. But a mentor can be really good at that. They can really be a mirror back to you and, and, and share, and you can trust them and share some parts of you, which you might not do with yourself. And just by expressing things often, clarity comes. So this is wonderful to have a mentor for. You can also, as a mentor can also show you how to grow into the person you want to be. And I think this is vital because we all have so much more space to grow into. We are never fully evolved. We're never fully aware. We are never fully complete. So there's always a new step for us, a new stretch for us that, that gets us to grow beyond our, our comfort zones. And we also need to develop our own mindset and our own mental games and a mentor can be great at that, playing back with you how you can actually grow. So I cannot imagine not having a mentor, to be quite honest. Even as an IPDD, I'm still talking to Florian and things are coming out of it because we have become and grown into really good friends now that he wishes to go on to uh, another level uh, in his um, career, he has asked me if I would be his support in that. And so new challenges, new opportunities, new things can arise out of your relationship and the network con conflict, uh, the network and congruence that you have with your mentor. So having a mentor can be a real, real good thing to have in your pocket. So I would really give you advice. Choose always a mentor who will challenge you. Don't choose a yay-sayer. Choose a, yet a mentor who will perhaps even get you to get really annoyed with him because or her, because ah, they're challenging you. And sometimes we need that challenge. Who's ahead of you in experience? Have regular meetings with them where you get to pick their brains, get a neutral feedback, and sometimes a kick in the butt. Never believe you do not need a mentor. You do not need one. It's great to have. It's great. A kid is, parent is a great mentor for a child. Every, everyone should have a mentor, no matter what age or at what level. It, sometimes a mentor can be your best friend. Uh, they, it doesn't have the title of a mentor, but a mentor can still be someone you can turn to when you want some challenges and to learn to grow and someone who will give you an honest feedback. There's always room for improvement. There's always room for learning. So there's always room for a mentor. I can really recommend it for everyone. And thank you for listening. 
And I hope that you can take something with you by just choosing a mentor, no matter who you are and at whatever level you are. Thank you very much. Thank you, Elizabeth, so much for this very, very interesting insight, thoughts and suggestions. And talking about trio members, our district director, Stefan Gruss just arrived. Nice to have you here, Stefan, hello. This is the guy we had the trio with Elizabeth together last year. And this year we are trio with Stefan and Katharina. Wonderful. Now let's talk about the next topic. The next topic is vice president mentoring. Maybe few of you hear this topic for the first time and feel like me. It was strange to it at the first moment. Let me explain. On my first visit as area director, I arrived early in the city to be sure I will be on time. And I was shopping. And then I received a message. Hi, I'm Marcos. Um, I will show you around and wonderful to have you here. And then I arrived at the club. It was a wonderful evening. And I asked him, what's your role? And he said, vice president mentoring. And I asked him, you mean membership, right? No, mentoring. Uh, dear friends, this role is not official board role. You know, we have the seven official roles. I personally will highly recommend to our organization to have this role as well. Because as you will hear, it could be a key success factor for you, for your club, and for your members. I'm so happy to have you here, Marcos. The digital stage is yours for vice president mentoring. Thank you, Stefan. Hello, everyone from my side. I would like to start my presentation with a question. And the first question to you is, what do you think? What is the role in a Toastmasters club with the highest workload, with, the, with a lot of work on the shoulders? And I would like that you use the voting via mentee.com. And in some seconds, I will share the screen. And I'm very curious what your answers will be. You find now the mentee.com and the code for this poll in the chat. I think this looks really like a very clear result in the poll. Thanks a lot. That is exactly what is my opinion as well, what I perceive from the clubs I, I'm in contact with. And there is one thing you should never forget. Everyone who works here in Toastmasters in, in our clubs is working on a honorary basis. And we all know we have some private things to do, we have our jobs, maybe a relationship, maybe a cat or whatever, or a dog. We have so many things to do. And as a VP education, there are so many things to do. And sometimes it is really challenging to fulfill all the requirements we have on our own shoulders and to bring an excellent quality. There are so many things to do. And one way, one great solution for this is to take one key part of this vice president education task out and to isolate it, to bring it to a, to a different, to an own 
club officer role, and that's the role vice president mentoring. I have been a vice president mentoring for nearly two and a half years in my home club in Düsseldorf. And I can only say this is a great success. As a VP mentoring, you are responsible only for the mentoring. Of course, this is already enough and you can do a lot with mentoring. But this is also great for the VP education because he is not involved in the mentoring anymore. And we all know that the VP education has already enough on the desk. If we are talking uh, VP mentoring, as I was in VP mentoring, very often I was one of the first persons the new member was in contact with. The, the VP membership has sent out a welcome email to the new member and there it was mentioned, if you would like to have a mentor, don't hesitate to contact Markus and there were my contact details. And the next point was, when I was talking then to the new member, the question was, who could be a good mentor for me? That was a question I have heard so many times. And I can only say, this is an extremely interesting and a difficult question because everyone at Toastmasters has a different background, is an individual, has different perspectives on whatever and has different expectations. So this is a very challenging question. Now, I would like to ask you, which animal of the animals you will see right now in a second, you would like to have as animal? Which animal would you like to prefer? Please write the answer into the chat. You see four interesting animals, four beautiful animals. Which animal would you like to choose? Unfortunately, it's not possible to have all of them, but if you have to decide to select one. Okay, I see a lot of answers in the chat and exactly now I'm seeing, of course, there were very different answers. And that's exactly what, of course, I expected. We are all individuals with individual perspectives and individual needs also with regards to the mentor. Who should be our mentor? Of course, who should be the best mentor? Everyone wants to have the best mentor for himself or for herself, but that depends on what I would like to learn from my mentor. If I would like to have a mentor who shows me how to run very quickly and to play with the ball or to be able to bite, then the dog would be the perfect mentor. If I would like to learn to fly, the bird would be the perfect mentor. If I would like to, to run on the grass and to, to enjoy eating carrots, the rabbit the bunny would be the perfect mentor. And if I would like to, to be perfect in scratching, someone with my crawls, then the cat would be the perfect mentor. So for me as a VP mentoring, I'm not in the position to say, this is the mentor for you. And this is the first thing I would like to give to you as an advice from my experience. Don't propose to someone, this is your mentor, but propose to the new member, go into the meetings, watch out for the ideal mentor. Take your time, two or three meetings, how many meetings you ever may need and watch out for the perfect mentor. And I'm very sure you will find the perfect mentor one day. So please note on with a, with a pencil and write down, please be a VP mentoring and please propose to the new members, watch out for your mentor on your own. That's my, my first advice. Second advice is always create a mentoring guide in your club. 
A mentoring guide is very helpful. One page is sufficient. You should write into your mentoring guide what mentoring needs in your club. And even maybe you would like to write into this guide what mentoring is not in your club. Maybe you would like to insert here a personal tip. For example, I also love the tip that the icebreaker speech of every new member is recorded. I think this is a very valuable and personal memory for everyone. And it's so nice to watch the own icebreaker speech after we have gone further in, in our Toastmasters journey for five, 10 or 20 years. How interesting would it be to watch again our first speech at Toastmasters. Write these personal things in your mentoring guide if you think this is valuable. Next tip is send out not only the mentoring guide, but also some of the documents of the Pathways Mentor Program to the new members. This is very helpful. And with this, the new members becomes aware of the existence of this Pathways Mentor Program from his first day on, from the first day when he gets a mentor. This is very helpful. Next advice from my experience is always speak on a regular basis about mentoring in your club. This can be on a quarterly basis or maybe on a six, month ba six monthly basis and do not put it on a too theoretical level. Take the chance to talk about mentoring success stories in your club. Why do you like mentoring? What were the challenges you were facing and how have you overcome this? It's a great chance and everyone in the meeting, including the guests, will become aware of here is a mentoring program in our club installed. It's a great advertisement and it's a great indication of quality in your club to have this well-working mentoring program. And the last tip I would like to give to you is definitely install a mentoring program, not only for new members, but also for experienced members. Mentoring does not stop after three or six months. Mentoring is a great tool for everyone, even for very experienced Toastmasters. And with this, I can only strongly recommend the Odyssey project. With Odyssey project, you can not only reach out to a totally new tool of potential new mentors, you can also find new men mentors, which is sometimes challenging in clubs with, with around 20 or less members. So a strong recommendation from my side, don't wait any longer register for the Odyssey project. So all in all, I would like to summarize, first of all, inspire your new member to ask questions about what is most important for him. What are the right questions? What would he or she like to learn? Second point is encourage him to choose his mentor by his own. Third point, create a mentoring guide in your club and present it in your club. Fourth point, send out the pathways, mentor program documents and the mentoring guide to the new members. And fifth point is talk on a regular basis about mentoring in your club. And the sixth point is introduce a mentoring program for experienced members and present the Odyssey project in your club. I'm very convinced that mentoring is the key for having more quality in our clubs and for having more members and more success in Toastmasters. Thank you so much, Marcos, for your advices. I need to say something. I completely disagree. Watching my icebreaker speech, the only thing in my head is, oh, Jesus, I need to delete this one before I'm famous. Because if someone else can see it, my career is destroyed. But it, of course, it's a joke. I love watching my icebreaker. Thank you so much for the wonderful advices. I posted once again our drive where you can find a lot of interesting stuff regarding mentoring. I will stop the recording in a minute so we can have an open discussion and you can ask anything you wish. I see 
uh, most or actually all our speakers are still here. So you can ask anything in a moment. Before we do that, uh, thanks once again to our speakers. We heard Gudrun talking about onboarding, mentoring and starting new clubs. Thank you, dear Gudrun. Uh, thank you for listening to me uh, talking about the pathways mentoring. Adriana told us about Odyssey. Then we had uh, wonderful advices from Elizabeth, Elizabeth regarding leadership. And then wrapping up advices by Marcus about VP mentoring. Thank you for joining us and goodbye for everyone who is watching the recording. Yo, thank you for the kind words in the chat.